Welcome back again. Nice to see you. You are now on part two. The dissection of the ThyssenKrupp Aurora button. Put this away because I couldn't get this in from the last video. No! Jesus, there we go. You have no idea how heavy that damn door operator is. Oh my god. We're going to take it apart with our Canton elevator screwdriver, which I did not even know I had to today. Till today. We're going to flip it over. I'm going to leave the camera like this. As you see, we take the screwdriver, we push this down, and out. Down and out. Easier said than done. Alright, it's time to bring out the big guns. That's not even the right screwdriver. Um, I think I can do it with this one. I'll try this side first. I'm not going to be taking this apart a lot. I'm only doing it for the show. Okay, I got one side. Now I just need to get the other. Ugh. Sorry about this. Oh, God damn. You see, this is why Tiz and Krupp technicians hated Aurora. They actually called it the Frisbee fixtures. At least that's what the ones at um, Walmart that I met called it. Let me try flipping it over. If I did this once, I can do it again. Well, I got one half out. I need to get the other half. believe these were manufactured in August of 07. It says 08, 07 on it. Or it could be backwards, like July of 08. Alright, hang on. I need to get the other screwdriver. Hold on. That screwdriver is not working for me, people. And I cannot find the other screwdriver, so we're gonna have to see what we can do with this one. Come on, you impulse wannabe piece of crap. Ooh, I almost had it. Wait. God, I feel sorry for the people who installed Stop and Shop. I, I seriously do, people. See, this is why I had to give this video its own part. You're going to be surprised to see what this thing looks like once I get it off. Okay, where is that other screwdriver? I've had enough of this. This'll do. Okay, let's give this baby a try, shall we? I think I got it. Yep, got it. Okay. Now that that shenanigan's over, you basically got two parts. The button itself and this. I'm going to take this apart fully. Which means we unscrew this. Gotta figure out which way it goes. My hands are all sweaty. Okay, here we go. Gotta unscrew this. As you can see, this piece comes off. And the little circular thing around the button. Now take a look at it from the side. Doesn't that look like Otis Lexan? See how it sounds now? Now take a look at this. That is the actuator right there. Those are the LEDs, which are a little off-centered right now, and I don't know why. Four LEDs and the button. And according to this, it's made by a company called DMG. And it was made in 2008. Here's the back. I'm not undoing those screws because I have no idea what they do. And I really don't need to. And this is what the back of the button looks like, ironically. So you would just put it on here like, like that, but I'm not going to right now because then I have to take it off again. And that pushes down on this. Which is made by a company called... Are you something like that? No, it's made by Omron. Made in Indonesia. Wow, it actually wasn't made in Germany. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to put an impulse button back together. What you do is, and I learned this the hard way, first you take this 
and you put it on the button like that. Then you take this, whatever you want to call this thing, and you screw it on like this. You gotta make sure it's completely on. It's gotta be it's like a water bottle, like the cap and go sideways. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're just gonna tighten it up. But good, because it's probably gonna be one of the last times I disassemble this. Because it was a bitch putting together. And you just snap it in like so. And you have your Tiz and Crop Aurora button. So, please stay tuned for part three, where I dissected Dover Impulse Button. That's it.